weary, weary of these infiltrating people. I'm weary of them. I'm very weary of them. Very weary. Titus chapter 3. I figure I get a, a, a leg up. Uh, get a leg up on a certain devil. Because I understand the temperament of these types of people. So I figure I get a leg up uh, before the psychopath person who doesn't have his own mind goes out and... And see, this is the thing, people. I've encountered this. When you encounter someone who makes a video against you, and hey, hey, this is America, Jack. You want to make a video against me? Go right ahead. Go right ahead. But see, this banter back and forth thing. Now, our enemies, the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will engage in that kind of thing, going back and forth, back and forth. I've seen it, and so have you probably, where a guy will make a video, and then another guy make a video against them, and that, 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 that. It will keep going, and our enemies, who are so petty, will gladly keep it going, keep it going. Why? Because, number one, it's a distraction. You people, in all the drama and all the excitement, right, you get all worked up about, hey, so-and-so is attacking so-and-so, so-and-so is attacking so-and-so, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay? People, you have to remember, you're watching this on YouTube, okay? YouTube is not of the church of God. Okay, there are those of us saints here, yes, but you have to remember the what this thing called the algorithm of YouTube, okay? What is profitable onto YouTube? Hmm? Think about that. When you got two people trying to bite each other's heads off, what happens? Conflict draws what? Attention. And see, the enemies of our Lord bank on that. That's why, okay, attack, 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 attack. And there, but there's a time and a place for everything. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Okay? But see, and I've witnessed this, especially with certain of these ITES, I-T-E, okay? I've seen this. One will do one, another, 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 back and forth, until someone's like... I'm done. I'm done. And these types of people, these types of people who mimic, who try, who are like almost like a chameleon trying to take on another person's persona to deceive and infiltrate. Hey, look at me. I'm one of you. Okay? I've seen this. I've dealt with it. Unfortunately, I have allowed myself to get caught, and it's easy. It's easy. Unfortunately, my enemies know that I have a temper. And unfortunately, my enemies know that um, I, you know, <laughs> I'm not perfect. <laughs> of course not. I, I'm, unless I'm from England or something like that, from the coasts thereof. But I'm not perfect. And hey, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I guess I'm not elect according to Calvinism, am I? Oh, and you, dude, who sent me that email, do you realize, dude, the very thing that you're accusing me of, you were doing yourself? Consider, dear friend. Do consider. Okay? But, like I said, figure I get this last leg up before some immature little cult follower gets one out too. Okay? Because that's the mentality of these people. They want to keep the banter going because it distracts you and it also draws people into them. Okay? All right? So, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please, read along with me, word for word, at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along, because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain, and vice versa. Okay? 
Read along with me. Okay, this is not for your entertainment. All right? But see, that's the thing. It's one thing to make a correction, to expose, but when the banter back and forth ain't doing that. Titus, chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. A man that is an hairy tick, as opposed to a bald tick. A man that is an heretic, after the first and second admonition, reject. Knowing that he that is such is subverted, and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Of himself. Uh, like a brother from Ohio. Brother, we're getting a little worried for, not worried, excuse me, um, concerned for you, okay? I, I, I got your message. Um, get a hold of us. Get a hold of me. Get a hold of any of the brethren when you can. Brother from Ohio. Please keep our brother from Ohio in your prayers. He has not given me specific permission to use his name, so I will not. But there's a brother who, who lives in Ohio who really needs our prayers. Please pray for him. But anyway, anyway, this will be the final thing that I'll do at all on that crazy closet Calvinist snot Scott at Grafted Into Hell Ministry because I know the temperament of these people. I do, okay? But we're going to touch on something that was touched on in yesterday's video, but I want to share with you a comment that was on the previous video, which is pinned. But I, I want to read this to you, okay? I want to read this to you. This comment comes from our beloved brother, Alexander B. Hartley, okay? And this is something that we're going to be touching on today, okay? This is something that we're going to be touching on today. The sting of emulation, mimicking, taking on the persona and everything of the visual stimuli Okay, hey dude, you gotta remember, Satan is all about eye candy. Okay, I'll be honest with you, I'm half tempted to stop it like this and just have you hear my voice. Hmm? I wonder how many of you people would click on if all you could see was that, nothing, but could hear it. Huh? Think about that. And I'll be honest with you, I am seriously contemplating that. Why? To be away with the visual stimuli. And it's not about judging about... Dude! Okay? Judging upon the appearance has nothing to do with it. Scott Snot over there is teaching veiled Calvinism. He's a heretic. And he's a deceiver and infiltrator. Okay? Alright? And he wants to ingratiate himself into a certain sect of... King James Bible believing Christians in order to get his own popularity and to deceive people. Okay? So, I want to read you this comment. Quote, and you can, it'll be, at the, it's it pinned in the previous video. I do grow a beard, but you will notice that I trim it every now and again also. I grow a beard because I do not feel like shaving every day. Even when I do not have a beard, I do not shave every day. This is convenient for me. It's easier. I dress the way I dress because I'm comfortable in it as I have aged and with the structural damage I have. If I have any mannerisms, actions, etc. that resemble someone else, it's because, that, it's because that's the way it is not out of emulation. And Mr. Snot Scott over there is an emulator of the guy from Maine. He, he's got his mannerisms, even in the way he pronounces, pronounces and speaks. He's a clone. He's a clone. Okay? He, anyway. If I have any mannerisms, actions, etc. that resemble someone else, it's because that is the way it is. Not out of emulation. What I have in those areas is mine. Brother Avenshine, and get the last name, Avenshine. Okay? Avenshine. Pronounce it right. 
okay? If you want to purposely mispronounce it like I'm doing with Snot Scott, go ahead. But if you want to be accurate about it, that's how you pronounce it, okay? Let's continue. Brother Avanchan and I may favor in some areas. That's the way it, it was long before we ever met one another. Brother Avanchan and I have the same beliefs because we, <laughs> I love this part of it. We read the same scripture and have the same teacher, he says here, but we have the same father. We have the same father. Okay? John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the capitalist spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. 1 John 2, 27. Good one here. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. That's a reference unto the Lord that lives within the saved, born again believer. Okay? And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now we've addressed this before. God uses man by the foolishness of preaching. Who deems preaching foolish? The world. Okay? God uses man. Okay? God uses man. We've discussed that. There will be links, if I can remember, in the description box about that. Okay? John 8, 31 and 32. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Let's read 1 John 2, 27 again. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If! Ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 14, 7. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Seeth him not. See? Guys like Snot Scott and others who have come before him, emulating the guy from Maine, it's all visual, people! And audible, because... Mannerisms are the same, okay? The inflection is virtually identical. The patterns are vir virtually identical. That opening video on Grafted into Hell's ministry, that opening video, Photoshop that idiot Scott out of there and put the guy uh, from Maine in there. What do you have? What do you have? You have a carbon copy, a clone. Okay? Do it. You guys who can do that. Get a, get a screenshot of that guy coming out of the woods, Photoshop him out, and then put the guy from Maine in there. Okay? Give me a break, people. Wake up! Wake up! Alright? Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you, and shall be in you. I am not trying, nor will I try, to emulate anyone. Amen, amen, amen. And I know my dear brother would not mind at all me quoting that. Okay? First, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Okay? One of the things that a dear young man who owes quite a few people an apology never happened. But um, uh, one of the things I truly believe that set off a certain young man uh, a year ago um, was that I did a video, Led of the Lord, where I wore a plaid shirt and I had the beard. I am convinced, I am convinced that the visual that that young man saw was one of the catalysts that set him off. Okay? That, that's... That's scary. That's terrifying. We walk by faith, not by sight. And you got to remember, the devil, Satan, is all about the visual. Okay, like I said, I am seriously contemplating doing this. So all you'll be able to do is hear. I'm seriously considering that. 
I really am. I really am. And not, not like the bloke from England who wants to hide his identity. You guys know who I am. You've seen my face. But see, it's not about this. It's about this. Okay? All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13, on to verse four, uh, 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves. Now, whether or not Mr. Snat Scott looked that way beforehand, I don't know and I don't care. But the evidence is in the presentation. Okay, I have listened to that devil. I gave that man my time. Okay? He's a man from Maine clone. He's got the mannerisms. He's doing the same things that the man from Maine does. Okay? And the man from Maine ought to be like... But you never know. You never know. Okay? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel... For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his grafted into hell ministers... Oh, excuse me. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works. Hey, I show you my blemishes. Okay, you see them. I'm not hiding anything. Okay, what you see is what you get. Okay, I get I get angry. I fly off the uh, off the handle. <clears throat> I'm not afraid or fret man at all, at all. Okay, I don't. And to be honest, your opinion of me means very little. What say it the scriptures? What say it the scriptures? Hmm? Go to John chapter 13. We are going to be touching on this thing. The thumbnail is going to be of cookie cutters. There is this cheap saying that I heard from a Christian that's like, when God made you, he broke the mold. God likes variety. Okay. All right. We follow the examples of faith. Okay. We follow the examples of faith. That does not mean that of men we take on their stuff onto ourselves. See, a lot of people will do that to replace something that isn't there. It's like, okay, if I take on myself, the persona of the man from Maine that will give off the appearance that I am a saint, that I am this righteous guy who knows stuff. Okay? You see how that works? You have to be aware of this. The times that we are living in, brethren, okay, the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh. Okay? And we are seeing deception today, but in very subtle, very ingenious, clever ways that most people are not looking to see because, hey, if it sounds good and the presentation is right, again, I want to do that. I'm praying about that. Okay? I'm praying about that. That way you don't see my ugly face. My faith cometh by hearing. Okay? All right? John chapter 13. Verses 1 on verse 17. Now, doctrinally and dispensationally, has Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No, he has not. He has not. Okay? But he's, he's about to. <laughs> okay? Just keep that in mind. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world, 
unto the Father. I said it that way purpose. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Shimon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Shimon Peter. And Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Interesting that the one who got indignant was Peter. We'll kick and uh, dig at our Catholic friends. Uh, wait until tomorrow, Lord willing. Okay. Yeah. Pagan thing of putting ashes on you. Anyway, continue. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do now, what I do, excuse me, thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Let that resonate in your head. Peter's attitude here. You're never going to wash my feet. What? I don't need to. Think about that one for a while. Think about what was said. Take time and think about it. Okay? Please. Ugh. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Shimon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my head, my hands and my head. Notice that. Look at that verse. Feet, hands, head. Crown of thorns, nail, nail. I'm sure that's just a coincidence, right? <laughs> uh, dear brother, you go ahead and work that one out on your own. If you get any notes, send them here. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean. But not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. We'll read 17. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master, capital M, and Lord, capital L, of course. And ye say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Let's, let's finish the verse 17. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And when you're dealing with Calvinists, especially closeted Calvinists, uh, they kind of exude this thing that, hey, well, I'm elect. Okay? I'm elect. There must be something good in you. Huh, snap? Huh? Yeah. There must be something real good in you. Huh? Yeah. Neither he that sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things. Happy are ye if you do that. Look at verse 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Now heretics out there, heretics out there as opposed to the bald ones, okay? Heretics out there, you hear this imitation of Christ. And that will be in the description box for you. That's an older video, okay? Uh, we're, we're to imitate Christ. Imitate. Imitate. Uh, find me imitate. Find it for me. 
Snatte. Okay? Snatte. But see, the Christians, a lot of Christians will be like, well, we're to imitate Christ. Okay. And when you search what that means, think about it. If you're going to imitate Christ, what does that mean? You know Christ never sinned, right? Christ is God the Father, right? So if you're imitating Christ, are you a little Christ too? Are you a little God? Like I said, this, uh, in the description box, a video where we go through that. If you don't want to watch it or listen to it, that's on you. You want to blindly follow some guy because he looks the part, sounds the part, and is in cahoots with the, from the guy from Maine, and now think for yourself! That's your problem, man. Not mine. That's your problem. Go to First Peter. Go to First Peter. Go to First Peter, and, and let the let the dogs do as they will, running around a bone. Let them, let them. After this, I'm done. I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time for this. First Peter chapter two, verses twenty-one on to verse twenty-five. For even hereunto were ye called. Now this called, called way, okay, that's what that means. God chose the way of the cross. And if he has saved you, you came the called way of the cross, which is death to yourself, brokenness, contrition, taking responsibility that your hand held the hammer and the nail and the fear of the Lord and calling upon his name. Now see, lost people can't get that. But those of us saints who are saved, we know. Because it happens like that. I could explain that to you devils, but you're not going to get it because you're not. Okay? Let's continue. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Now, here is where we as man falter. Who did no sin. Well, we got to imitate Christ. Christ didn't sin. Christ is God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? He's God the Father. Christ never sinned. Okay? No man on earth cannot not sin. Okay? And you got some Christians out there talking about sinless perfection. That is one of the easiest to debunk uh, that come from some of these heretics. I, I, I mean, if you ever run into these people, all you got, okay, explain Romans 7 to me. Explain it. Because like I constantly tell you, uh, Paul missed that one. Mm -hmm. Paul mi Peter missed that one too. Okay? We cannot not sin. We are to strive not to sin. But, <laughs> unless you're from the coasts of England, of course. That, that's a totally, you know, people should worship his feet. Ugh. But anyway, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. You know, there are times, brethren, where we got to be like, hey, Lord, I can't defend myself. You want me to say something, I will. You want me to do something, I will. But, you know, and see, pacifists will come in, you know, pacifists will come in and say, well, we're not supposed to fight back. Someone tries to hurt my wife, okay. I got uh, 38 reasons why they ought to be afraid and 357 reasons why they ought to be afraid to mess with my wife. Okay, someone comes in here, I'm going to protect what has been given to me. Okay, you break into this place, you're going to die. And see, some of you Christians are like, oh, depraved indifference is a sin. Okay, all right. We don't fight fire with fire. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
But when you have, when you are given a wife, okay, when you are given the gift of children, okay, you as the man, the father, the husband, okay, the head of the house, someone break in, okay, someone break in to your place. Do as you got to do. And you got to remember, too, this is a little rabbit, but go with me. Um, especially like in here in Illinois, um, you can look online of stories about people who, like guys who broke into someone's house. And someone shot them, but wounded them. And the guy who broke in to the guy's house, the guy who owned the house, had no clue what this guy was going to do. But he shoots him in the leg. Okay? Doesn't kill him. The intruder sues the homeowner, and the homeowner goes to jail. You look that up. You look that kind of stuff up. If you're a father, if you're a husband, late at night, someone breaks into your place, what, to, buy, to borrow some sugar? Huh? Someone breaks into this little apartment. I know a lot of you have a problem with that, but this is the way it is. Someone breaks into this par apartment trying to harm my wife. They're going to meet the Lord. Period. They are going to meet the Lord. Anyway, let's continue. Verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. And reference Isaiah 53. Now, Mormons also believe that you can redeem yourself. Okay, also that, that's why, I, as I understand it, in Idaho, I believe, the Mormons are basically out of uh, that uh, uh, execution by bullet is still available so that they could bleed to make atonement. Okay? We can't atone for our own sins. Okay? That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. So, the Lord gave an example of selfless, selflessness, of charity, indeed, which is self-sacrifice. Okay? All right. We cannot imitate Christ. I will go as far as to say that is blasphemy. Well, you're supposed to imitate Christ. Uh, number one, you sin. Number two, you cannot atone for your own sins. Okay? You can't do that. You're not a little God. Okay? All right? But his example of selflessness, of handing everything over, okay, in order to fulfill what is before him, okay. Like Paul, I have, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, okay. And not this nonsense that he's keeping faith to keep himself saved. No, no, no. no. He kept the faith, okay. And on that, okay, oh, oh, I forgot one more. Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, real quick, okay? Matthew chapter 10, about this thing about these people who are imitators, okay? Emulators, mimic, okay? Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough that the disciple, it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master. Now, this appears in Luke chapter 6 as well. But, something to consider. Before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, before that, the law was still binding. He had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures, and shed his blood on the cross. Okay, So, the law was still binding. And before his death, burial, and resurrection, he was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? He was. So, in context of that, when you look at the statement, 
during the kingdom of heaven, people, it's all works. Okay? It's works. Don't believe the sleazy believist heretics who say it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. They're lying to you. Okay? All right? So in context, think about that. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Meant for a dispensation where faith is not required. You don't need faith when you're going to be able to see the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne. Okay? Read Hebrews 11 verse 1 as a scriptural definition of what faith is. Okay? All right? It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. And people like uh, Grafton in the hell ministry and others before him, okay, Utilize this principle, but in a way of deception, to get in and cause division and to deceive people. Okay? Hey, you talk about a wolf in sheep's clothing, huh? Yeah. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Okay? Christ did not say for his disciples to, when he's like, you know, do as I have done. He doesn't mean that you take on the physical attributes and stuff like that. Even, you know, use the same tonation of voice or something like that. That's not what he's talking about. The example of what he was doing, that selflessness, that dedication, okay? That is what that means. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Doctrine specifically for us today in this dispensation. Okay? 1 Corinthians 11 verses 1. Now we covered these in yesterday's video. But like I said, I'm uh, going to expound a little bit more on this today. 1 Corinthians 11 verses 1 on verse 3. Thank you, part. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And a lot of you... Women don't like that one, of course. And the head of Christ is God. Now, look at verses 1 and 2. Be ye followers of me. We're going to look at quite a few scriptures here. Uh, Paul does not tell anyone to take on his mannerisms, to take on his look, to take on his actual physical actions. But the faith that Paul lived and demonstrated, his speech... His speech. Okay. Meaning. Scriptural speech. You don't mimic another man's vocal pattern. Or anything like that. Okay. His inflection. You don't mimic. Alright. Are you a robot? Were you? Are you a cookie cutter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are a cookie cutter Christian, aren't you? Okay. But look, be ye followers of me. Paul the Apostle Ministries. Find that. Like I told you yesterday, I'm, I'm very, very suspect. I am. I, I, I am. It just, that, that rubs me raw. Um, it does. It's like, so-and-so ministries. Ken Helvin Ministries, or... Or, 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 you know, Robert Breaker Ministries, or uh, uh, Real Bible Believers Ministries, uh, Crafted in the Hell Ministries. That always, that's like, why, 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 why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Hmm. What, you need to inform people? That, hey, it's ministry. See, see, see the, the presentation? Hmm. That, that is just me. I, I know that that doesn't always mean what I'm kind of insinuating. I get that. 
but that's a personal thing, and I'm sharing that with you. That 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 always it's like. Paul is not saying to be as he is in every way, shape, and form. What he is saying is, Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. The example of how he walked in the faith. Okay. Not wearing the exact shoes that he had, but how he lived in the faith. There's a difference. And you got guys like Scott who blur that and use it to deceive you. Okay? Like I said to him in the comments, which I deleted and I blocked that guy. I ain't got time for a, for a dope like that. But uh, I told him, he doesn't have his own mind. Yeah, I'm of a sound mind. Why you got to tell me that? Hmm? Why you got to tell me that, boy? Because you don't do your own thinking. It's like the Jesuits at war without will. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, Mr. What's-His-Name is a Jesuit. I, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, you're teaching a veiled form of Calvinism. That's enough for me to be like, stay away from the guy. Okay? All right? <laughs> okay? Now, go to Galatians chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 20. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Be as I am. So take on his persona, his mannerisms, his physical countenance kind of thing. Even get the same kind of shoes, okay? All right? Um, copy, imitate his vocal inflection, his physical appearance and stuff like that to become a carbon copy. And see, I believe that some of these people think, well, if, if I encompass all these things of another, that will ingratiate unto me what he has. <laughs> no! No! Okay? <laughs> For the love of! <laughs> For the love of, people! Oh. <laughs> oh. See, and that's another danger of this heretical faith of Jesus as Mr. Snot Scott teaches. Okay? And dear friend... <laughs> Um, the Calvinistic viewpoint that that man teaches is very plain as the nose on my face. Okay? You, oh, by the way, you, you, you might see this. Um, uh, I, I don't got time for you either. Okay? 55-page dissertation trying to defend a heretic. Okay? Interesting. My defense is of God. And one of these cultic mentalities of people that I have seen, so have so have many of you, and it evolves, evolves around people who put other men on a pedestal. I'm going to use Robert Breaker as an example. You go, you point out to him that he's sleazy believist, okay? Um, his disciples will come an attack in his defense. Now, okay, if you want to stick up for a friend or a brother, fine, fine, okay? But some of these guys take that way too far, way too far, okay? And they think that they want to go, and they, they do, and they will go and defend their favorite preacher or teacher, putting them up on a pedestal. And some of them glory in it and revel in it. Okay? The Lord is the one who fights our battles. Okay? And I, myself, personally, am very capable of defending myself. Now, if a brother, like a Brother Alexander Hartley, one day is like, you know, wanted to make a video in defense, he, he, that man's my friend. 
That man has been in my house. Okay? If the young brother from Croatia wants to do the same, okay? That I've, I've looked at that man face to face. Okay? There's a different dynamic. Okay? People, if you are saved, if you are a saint, then we are brethren. We are brethren, and we are to love each other as brethren. But that doesn't mean that we are all on terms as friend. Okay? There are people out there who are my brother, who I love. Don't like them. They don't like me. Fine. But if they came to me in an instant, like, Brad, I need to talk to you. Can you help me out? I don't like you. I think you're my brother. I love you. Okay. I'll talk to you. All right? I gave that. But obviously, of course, it was spat back in my face. And, of course, the way I get sometimes is like, okay, pal. All right? Let's go. But, and see, and that's, you know, and that's something I need to wear on myself. Okay? All right? Let's continue. A little rabbit there. Verse 13, ye know that ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. Be as I am, gospel. Look at the tie in there. And my temptation which was in my flesh ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Jesus Christ. Oh, and boy, and Harry Tex with their imitate Christ could go crazy with that one. Anyway, let's continue. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing when you look at certain things that set certain people off. So, hmm, interesting. Anyway. They zealously affect you, but not well. I said it that way purposely. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. Get their own little cult following, okay? Get their own little cult following. Not to my knowledge, and, and my brethren wouldn't do this. Uh, a brother uh, might go onto a video and be like, put, uh, let us reason together or something like that. But the brethren that I converse with, that have close fellowship with, they, <laughs> Brad can, Brad's got a mouth on him, <laughs> okay? He, he can take care of himself, okay? Okay? That, and, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, okay? But see, they do these things, why? To get people to come after them. And like I said, it's very interesting that the video that Mr. Snot made against me, good for him, good for him, uh, got lots of views. I find that interesting. I find that interesting. But see, there again, the thing about here on YouTube, what sells? You know, I don't take these videos where you have to address other people lightly or lightly. I don't. Because I know that's what people enjoy. I know that. But when you are to do something like that, that's part of this thing. Okay? That is. It's part of it. That's how it works. There's a time and place for everything. Okay? But, like, for example, on this channel that the Lord gave me, the most popular video is the one that was done on Mark the Messenger. Okay? That, see, unfortunately, on this thing of YouTube, that's what gets attention. Okay? And when it's something that's needful to do, that's a different story. But others will do that just to get noticed. Sometimes I wish I were deaf and blind, huh? Yeah, let's continue. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and there is nothing good but God. And not only when I am present with you. My little children. 
of whom I travail and birth again until Christ be formed in you. Working out what has been put in. Okay? The new man that you don't is not put upon you at gunpoint, but what has been the Lord is in you. And you read the scriptures. And you live your life according to the scriptures, doctrinally specific, the Pauline epistles for us today, okay, you live out what the Lord has put in, Christ formed in you. That doesn't mean you become a sinlessly perfect individual. No. More selfless. More charity. More humility. Greater at abstaining from all appearance of evil. And again, remember, Romans chapter 7. Okay? I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt with you. Again, are you, are you entertained? Huh? You entertained? Huh? Because I yell? Huh? Huh? You entertained? This is who I am. This is me. This is not an act. This is not a facade. This is not theater. Okay? What you see is what you get. I stand in doubt of a whole lot of people. I really do. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Again, God's not holding a gun to your head forcing you to do these things, which is totally contrary to Calvinism, which is why that twit got set off. With all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And amen, dear brother from Ohio. Amen. Amen. And what is the source of all division amongst true saints? Flesh. Every single, every single time. It's flesh. Paul and Barnabas. Okay? Both sides had good valid arguments. Paul's like, hey, we shouldn't trust them yet. Barnabas, hey, I came to you and trust, gave you a second chance, didn't I? Okay? But obviously, who did the Lord favor in that endeavor? Obviously, Paul. Okay? But flesh is always amongst brethren, the divider. That's because nothing is at gunpoint. See, that's why you have divisions amongst brethren who want nothing to do with Roman Catholicism versus brethren who choose to associate themselves with Rome for one day in December. Perfect example. Okay? That's carnal. Carnality. All right? And if there is a doctrinal thing amongst brethren... What, what, what's the dividing line? The scriptures. Because the scripture is right. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the capital S spirit in the bond of peace. Someone who's preaching another Jesus and Calvinism ain't my brother. And he's not yours. Oh yeah, I'm rude in speech, ain't I? <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. You know? Like I said, someone preaching Calvinism ain't my brother. Not do that to your face, young man, little boy. Let's continue. There is one body and one capital S spirit not three. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, 
one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, context, saved people. Okay? Because there are those out there that's like, well, everybody is saved, they just need to know it. Wow. 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 Now, let's continue. First Thessalonians chapter 4. See, what we are to follow of those in positions like that is not, is not this. It's this. The scripture. Okay? The example of their faith in following the Lord. The example of their faith willing to go down on the Titanic so that another person might get off of it. How many of you, seriously, seriously, how many of you, and there are brethren out there, there are brethren out there who will do for others and put themselves at a disadvantage. I know scripture talks about that, but they do that out of a willing heart for the betterment of someone else. I know that there, I know the scriptures about equality, that not, not the other be eased and ye be burdened. I understand that, but there are brethren out there who will do that, who will do that out of a pure heart and charity. I know of uh, uh, offhand quite a few actually who are like that. Willing to do something for someone else that benefits you not at all. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses one and verse nine. Further furthermore than furthermore then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments, there's that link in again, with commandments, we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, which is of the world. Okay? That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God who hath also given unto us the holy capital as spirit himself. We are sealed until the day of redemption. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. First, uh, and now verse, first Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 and verse 23. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. And to imitate them very... <coughs> Excuse me. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be... <coughs> Patient toward all men. All men. One of you, 
a video on the difference between long suffering and patience. They are not the same thing. One does encompass the other, but they are two different things. Okay, that would be an interesting video. Okay, hint, hint. Okay, but anyway, see that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good, and there is none good but who? God. Both among yourselves and to all men, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit, capital S, despise not prophesying. See, and right there, Quench not the spirit. How do you quench the father that dwells in the saved believer? Hmm. How? Ignoring it. Because guess what? You wicked Calvinist. God doesn't make you, force you to do anything. You have to make the right choices. What is it with you guys? Despise not prophesy. Prove all things. Hold fast that what is that which is good. And there is none good but who? God. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And here's what a person is. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God that your whole spirit and soul and body, that's what a person is, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's add verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 12 on to verse 16. Let no man despise thy youth. Why was Paul saying that? Because that from a child he had known the Holy Scriptures. Okay? Timothy was raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That, that guy, he was brought up. The man from Maine's son. When that young man grows up, that, that boy going to be... Okay? He's being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay? I don't like even going there to about this guy but unfortunately with the individual who I'm, I'm addressing it all weaves into this okay Paul said that of Timothy because Timothy was brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and in a present context to this that little boy that sweet dear little boy uh, from the man from Maine that little boy going to grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and not being poisoned by the, the Jesuit order from the school system. I give that man respect for doing right by his son according to the scriptures. Amen. Okay, and that's enough. Enough. I don't want to talk about that guy. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in word, in word, don't worry, Scripture will explain itself. In word, does that mean that you use the same words? The same mannerisms? No. no. In conversation, in charity, in spirit, well, okay, it says, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading. What are you reading? Commentary? John MacArthur's things. <laughs> Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, oh, excuse me, with the lying on of the hands of the press, the tree. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself, and on to the doctrine. Continue in them. 
For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And that's not talking about an active like he's saving himself or anything like that. Okay? Okay? Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Now you got to remember, the book of Hebrews is written for who? The Hebrews. Okay? For the time of Jacob's trouble. Beg your pardon. So, when you read the book of Hebrews, remember, it's written for the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is faith and works. Okay? That's, that's blind people can see that. Okay? But then again, you people aren't reading the scriptures. You want a shot in the arm. You want to trust someone because they look like your favorite preacher. They sound like him. Have the same mannerisms. Use the same template. The same background. Why? Anyway, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I, I don't. I do, but I, I, I don't. It, it's, it's full of wonder. Okay? Hebrews for, uh, chapter 13, verses 1 on verse 9. Now, during the time of Jacob's trouble, there's no eternal security except for the 144,000 Jews. Okay? You can be a Christian all you want and believe and receive. You take that mark in your right hand or in your forehead, you're done. There's no oopsies. Okay? So, that in mind. <clears throat> Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels and wares. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and, with, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Yeah, uh, and Paul talks about that, you know, um, uh, uh, suffer with those who suffer, uh, rejoice with those who do rejoice, and weep with those who weep, okay? Being like-minded, okay? Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed and the file. By whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow. Considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. Now verse 7, whose faith follow, you got to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is for the time of Jacob's trouble. But for us today, okay, the example of their faith, of how they're walking in the scriptures, okay, all right, that's what that's talking about. You don't become a little what's his name or a little what's his name, okay? And if that is, there's something lacking. <laughs> because I've seen that. I've seen that. Especially with that, you know, these ites. They have come and they have gone. All right? All right? John chapter 21 and, and this and this this John chapter 21 John chapter 21 verses 18 on to the close and see and this right here is what I'm getting at this right here because an individual like Snot Scott is imitating the man from Maine. Period. Prove me wrong. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, 
and was and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou art, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This verse nineteen tells you what this is talking about. This spake he, signifying by what by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Imitate me. Oh, excuse me. Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple, whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. I, I hate to use the cliché, but I'm going to. I hate, I don't want to use it, but I'm going to. Yes, God made you, he broke the mold. I think the problem with a lot of Christianity, and especially with King James Bible believing Christians, is that there are one too many who seek to be cookie cutters. The, 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 the modern Ruckmanites, man. I mean, look at the modern Ruckmanites. Wow! Bloodthirsty savages. Okay? Bloodthirsty. Okay? Bloodthirsty savages. And at the end of Peter Ruckman's life, that man was getting off on the fact that uh, he, was, he was, you know, being put on a pedestal. And see, that is a real problem for someone in a position as this. And you need to get off the high horse and get, get your face in the dirt every once in a while. Friday, like I said in the previous video, Friday was Glorious day. The Lord was magnified. But as I have learned, and a dear brother, Brother Alexander Hartley, said to me, it's like, you know, and this is this is the fact. When the Lord uses you, it's safe to say that you can expect Satan to come along with a little kick. I have a pride problem. I have a pride problem. You have seen it kind of uh, um, demonstrated today. Yes, you have. I do. I have a pride problem. And with the experience that the Lord has given me, it's interesting because Friday was a beautiful day. My wife and I worked together in a personal thing there with a relative and gave the gospel. She did the reading. It's like, go here, go here, go here. Okay? Fine. In that context. Absolutely. And we don't know if it stuck, but the Lord was glorified that day. And then the next day, it's like, huh, go figure. Jesus saith unto him, if I will, till he, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying among the, uh, abroad among the brethren that that disciple should not, not die. Yet Jesus said not that unto him he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself should not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Amen. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Verses 8 on the verse 9. Verses 8 on the verse 9. 
It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, just one verse. Just one verse. Verse 23. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Yeah. Uh, a Rockmanite. Calvinist. A Lutheran. And whatever it you want to attack on to that. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. And saying that the faith that you have isn't yours, that's another gospel. That's another Jesus. That's a Jesus who is coercive, who is forceful, who makes you do things. That's not the Jesus of Scripture. But there be some that trouble you, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Oh, how many men pleasers are there out there? Especially within King James Bible believing Christianity, which is its own demonination. I said it that way purposely. Y'all want to be separate, but yet you've made yourself of the number. What's wrong with y'all? King James Bible-believing Christianity is just another denomination now. It is! For do I now persuade men of God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I, I do care about people. But when it comes to the scripture and truth, I don't care about your feelings. You know what else? I don't care about my own feelings either. When it comes to truth. Okay. Well, I've been, I've been kicked in the stones by brethren. Ouch! But see, when a brother does that, I know that a brother does it out of love. Not to gain for the visual stimuli. Anyway, let's continue. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. And Calvinism, Lutheranism, Ruckmanism, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and then we will be done. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 13. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. How in the wide world of sports entertainment could I be of one mind with someone who thinks that the Lord is the one who gave him his faith? How can a saint be of one mind with Calvinist? 
How can a saint be of one mind with a Catholic, with a German Catholic, Lutheran? Can't do it. Which Jesus? For it hath been declared unto me. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now I say, now this I say, that every one of you saith, well, excuse me, now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of uh, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? And see, what happens is, when you have two people professing to believe and trust in the same Lord come against each other like that, what also does it give off onto those who may see the example of it? Have you, have you thought about that? See, when you got a deceiver like that, who comes out of nowhere, whose Calvinism is exposed, okay, what does that give off onto those onlookers? Because you got to remember, you got to remember, you got to remember, this is YouTube. This is public. Okay? It's not like the public out there where the interaction is mano y mano. If I'm face to face with you, boy, that's something different. Okay? When you don't have plastic, when you don't have cyberspace between you. Okay? Okay? With a brother, yes, that dynamic can be similar. But for example, uh, and I said this, if, if my dear brother, our dear brother, excuse me, uh, from Croatia was right here. Put some weight on them bones, I'll tell you that, boy. But the dynamic is different because it's it's there. It's there. Okay? This, you two. Okay? Yeah, okay. Here's for those of you who want to twist the scriptures about justifying a woman teaching on YouTube like this. I challenge you this. Okay. Well, it's made for women. Okay? And they might even put disclaimers in there. But see, you cannot control your audience here on YouTube. Do this. Why don't you make it um, uh, unlisted and send people the link? That way you can control it a little bit more. Huh? If it's truly for women and a woman's doing preaching, okay. Okay? Make it unlisted. And then, hey... For, you know of sisters? Okay, hey, this is for you. This is for you. But no, you put it on YouTube like this. Okay? Dog. Okay? That is going to be it for this video. And despite what this um, imbecile, this devil will do, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. And you know what? He He's into that crowd. Okay? He is into that crowd of the guy from Maine. He is. Okay? There is a debt. Like I said, King James Bible-believing Christianity is now just another denomination with its own little sex. S-E-C-T-S. -E okay? You got... Those who follow Breaker. You got those who follow Gene Kim. You got those who follow uh, the man from Maine. You got those who follow Ken Helvin. Okay? King James Bible believing Christianity is fragmented. Why? Because of this. Because of this. And when you one is infiltrated into that group by giving you things that go to the senses and you don't take the time to search the scriptures yourself. And see, that, that man has pull among the people. You can see it.
and the devil going to pull you to hell, Scott. Wish it wasn't so. I wish it wasn't so. You are my enemy. And unfortunately, I hate you with perfect hatred. You are an enemy of the true Lord Jesus Christ. Because you preach and teach a God of coercion, a God of force. That's not the true Jesus Christ. Lord rebuke you. You can go ahead and get everybody on your bandwagon. Go right ahead. I'm sure you will, you petty little man. I'm sure you will. Have a good time. Enjoy yourself. I hope, I hope, I hope that you're having the best life now. I really do. I hope everything is going great for you. I hope you don't have to worry about or be troubled about certain things. I, I, I hope every I hope your your refrigerator refrigerator never goes bare. I hope you never encounter any difficulty. Because this is the best you ever gonna get, boy. Oh, I wish it wasn't so. I'm done. <coughs> so. Thank you, brethren, for watching this if you do. Sorry for my harshness. Like I said, I know the minds of these people. I've encountered it. I've seen it. Okay? The back and forth, back and forth. Let them go make a hundred. Go ahead. I'm done. You people want to be let along? At least check it out yourself. That's all I got to say about that.